Hey, hey, welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander, and I'm so glad that you've joined me today. We want to talk about what has changed in business and what the benefits are to selling on Amazon. So before I do that, though, I want to enjoy and invite you to the Mommy Income Facebook group. This is where we hang out. This is where we answer questions about what you have questions about on Amazon, on um, setting up bundles. There's tons and tons of sellers in there and they help each other out. And I'm in there and we're answering questions all the time. Mommyincome.com slash join us with the code word benefit, hashtag benefit. Yeah, we're talking about benefits today. And so I wanna make sure that you guys are in the Facebook group and you're asking questions, whether you're new or you've been selling for a long time on Amazon, this is the place that you want to be to be able to ask questions and get quick answers. There's a lot of people that know a lot about Amazon. Some are have been selling longer than me even. And so you wanna make sure that you go there and join the Facebook group, mommyincome.com slash join us. Code word is benefit. But we got some brief updates. So I know that, how are you guys holding up first of all? How are you holding up? Some are still under very strict quarantine, stay at home orders until the end of May. Some in other countries, I know in Ontario and in Canada, there's some people that are until the end of June um, supposed to be quarantined and being staying there that long. So wherever you are in the world, wherever you are listening right now, just know that I'm here for you. You can join the Facebook group and have conversations and just, you know, if you need to vent about some crazy things, that's great too. Um, but I got some updates as far as the last seven days or so on Amazon, um, most of the country is, oh, uh, most of the country is opening back up. Check with your vendors often. If you are selling on wholesale, if you're selling wholesale products and you're making wholesale bundles, check with your vendors often because some of them are opening back up for shipment. Maybe they have, um, limited staff, but they're all of a sudden starting to staff because I know at least here in Michigan, um, we are at least on stay at home orders for the next couple of weeks, but they have opened up certain types of businesses that weren't open before. So making sure you're checked with your vendors and make sure that they are, see if they're open. Um, be ahead of the game as well. This is another update that I wanted to bring out to you guys is being ahead of the game. If you are used to ordering from specific vendors that have been closed and haven't been shipping, now is the time to send the POs of what you want. Even if they're not shipping yet, as soon as they open back up, your PO is going to be on their desk first in their inbox, wherever it is. And then you can have a jump start on the, uh, the stuff they have. Because if they've been closed, they've also not been receiving inventory from wherever they import it, if they import. If they're direct manufacturers, then they might be behind on manufacturing. So you want to make sure that you get those POs in early and you let them know, I'm wanting to buy these things and here's the quantities I want to buy as soon as you guys open your doors. Just be ahead of the game so that you're ready when um, some of these manufacturers and people that haven't been shipping are going to start shipping. Also, you want to make sure that Amazon's been improving their shipping times lately. So we know Prime has been a thing of the past kind of thing. Some of the things they're shipping pretty quickly, but other things they're just lead times are two or three weeks out. Sometimes you'll go to order something that says Prime, but then it says that it won't actually ship to you until June 4th or something crazy like that. And so making sure that on your listings, you pay attention to that. So they're accepting more and more ASINs in the FBA warehouses, but they're limiting quantities. So making sure that you understand how much you can sell and how many of those things that you can ship in, but still check the longer lead times. The longer lead times, people have been shipping stuff into FBA thinking, oh, it's going to be business as usual. And these are going to sell 10 or 15 a day or hundreds a day. And then realize that the sales just aren't coming in because Amazon's not promising the shipping, the shipment to go out. And so if someone needs that, um, you know, by the mid May, and then it's not promised until the end of May or maybe June, then you have this problem where, um, you don't have any inventory, so you can't do merchant fulfill because you've sent it all into FBA, but FBA is not shipping it out until a certain amount of time. So there's this crossover. Check your ASINs for ship dates. If you want to be able to ship things and have them be truly prime, make sure that it's showing prime on your account. Now, 
you may want to hold, this is what we're doing, is we're holding about 50% of our inventory in-house. This is not traditionally how we do business. For you guys that don't know, we mostly use a prep center. We do wholesale bundles. We ship all of our stuff to the prep center. They prepare it and they ship it to FBA. That is business before COVID. And so now that we have COVID-19 and we're, you know, maybe coming out of it or perhaps turning a corner in most places of the world, um, Amazon is still behind and Amazon is still doing whatever they want to do to make sure that they're keeping the majority of their customers happy. And newsflash, we are not the customers they're trying to keep happy as sellers. They're trying to keep their buying customers happy and that Amazon's always been about that. So making sure that you pay attention to what they're doing and looking at your ASINs regularly. Um, check with prep centers to see if they're opening, if they're shipping, and if they're able to do that. Now we're doing 50-50 merchant fulfill right now. We're having some of the stuff shipped to this prep center where they're bundling and patch packaging as usual, shipping to FBA. The other thing we're doing is reserving about 50% of that inventory um, in-house so that if we can beat Amazon ship times, people will order Merchant Fulfill. That's why Merchant Fulfilling is working really well right now. Is this a long-term game? No, unless Amazon decides to discontinue Prime, which you know they're never going to do. Um, they're hiring more drivers, they're hiring more warehouse workers as we speak, they're trying to keep up with the demand, but lately they have not been able to do the two day as promised because some of their warehouses are shut down, some of their drivers aren't able to work, whatever that is. It will get back to what we considered as normal prior to COVID um, sooner than later. But in the meantime, you can still do things and make pivots to have business be as usual as possible. Now, I don't love merchant fulfilling any more than some people do, and that's totally fine. Um, but it, you gotta do what you gotta do, right? When, when business is cut 99% um, and you have to make a pivot in a hurry to keep your business open, you, you do what you ever have to do. So we've been merchant fulfilling and we've been sending 50% of our inventory into the Amazon warehouses for the people who don't mind waiting a couple extra weeks. And we've keep some in house so that we ship we have, and you're allowed to have two listings on Amazon. You can have one that's um, fulfilled by Amazon and fulfilled by Merchant on the same ASIN. You can list twice. That is something that's allowed because one of them is Merchant Fulfill and they don't consider that direct competition, I guess. So check with those. And, and if you haven't, if you have, if you don't know how to do Merchant Fulfill, if you've never done Merchant Fulfill, you don't know how to set up your shipping templates, you don't know how to process a return, you don't even know how to buy shipping on Amazon and do a, a Merchant Fulfill listing, um, go to mommyincome.com slash MF, yeah, MF, Merchant Fulfill, um, and get this mini course. It is quick and easy Merchant Fulfill selling. Um, it's from the selling family, Jessica LaRue and Cliff LaRue that do um, the selling family. They put the, together this small mini course. It's not expensive and it will literally have you Merchant fulfilling by the end of the day. It's not that difficult, but there are some steps that you need to take to make sure that you don't lose money on shipping. That is the biggest mistake people make when they do merchant fulfill. They make mistakes on shipping and then they go from here to Anchorage, Alaska, and it takes, you know, it costs $20 and the item you're shipping is only $14.99. So the idea here is making sure that you set this up correctly so that you're not, so number one, you can be price competitive, but also number two, you don't get screwed on shipping mommyincome.com slash mf to learn about the mini course that you can take it's it's fast quick easy it's probably the best fifty dollars you'll spend because if you don't know how to do merchant fulfill merchant fulfill has saved our business in the past six weeks or however long this has been going on seems like endless months at this point but that has what saved our business immediately we called vendors we shifted products that we were selling we had them shipped to our home and we started merchant fulfilling like crazy people that has literally saved my business now do i want to do that long term is that a long-term game absolutely not and we're going to talk about that in a second um, but it's you do what you got to do in these crazy times in order to set yourself up for long-term success. Remember, this isn't get rich quick. This is my full-time income. This is this might be your full-time income or your side hustle, and it's one of those things where you want to establish your business in the best way possible for long-term sustainable success. 
We don't want to constantly just being do, doing the short term thing that just makes a little bit of quick cash now, because then you're constantly in the cycle. If you've ever heard of anybody who's done those like paycheck loans, for example, you know, that was like the, they popped up everywhere, like probably 10 years ago or so. And they were all these paycheck advanced loans. Well, it's that vicious cycle you get in and you're like, oh, I need a loan on my paycheck, but then you're short next week. And so you need another loan on your paycheck. And pretty soon you're in this devilish circle of um, constantly um, being in the here and now, instead of thinking about long term, how can you set yourself up for financial success? That's what I'm about here at Mommy Income. I want to make sure that you guys are setting your businesses up for long term sustainable success. If you just want to make a few quick dollars, like sell on offer up, sell on Facebook marketplace, sell on places where you don't have long term commitments. But Amazon's a big deal. You you're paying with those fees that you pay Amazon, you are paying them to ship and store and reach billions of customers and yes billions worldwide customers can you do that on your own like without all those fees and with all, all the bells and whistles no this is why we sell on amazon because they provide the traffic they provide the customers they provide customer service <laughs> barely <laughs> i mean if, if we want to call that customer service that they at least don't serve us but Anyway, don't get me on my soapbox about Seller Central and Amazon's seller support because they, they could use some improvements there. But the reality is Amazon is an excellent place to sell and it will continue to be as when this COVID stuff is over. We're going to talk about that next week and how to recession proof your business because my prediction is we will see a longer term recession come out of all of this um, coronavirus, COVID kind of crisis going on. We're going to see long term economical um, hindrances from this stuff. And so I want to set you guys up for that as well. And knowing how you can make shifts during these crazy times to keep your business alive. Because you guys might not know this, but back in 2008 i still i had just started amazon in 2008 and then there's this big recession and this big crash and my husband and i were affected he was injured at work we ended up in foreclosure during these the last recession that we had but my business stayed alive and it actually grew during a recession. And so I'm going to share a, a little bit about the things that I did to recession proof my business the last time we had a recession, which wasn't even that long ago. And then what you guys can do to make shifts now to make it through um, what we would consider the lean times. So make sure you tune into next week's episode for the, that information. But want to go through what hasn't changed as far as Amazon. You need to have realistic expectations going into the next few quarters of selling on Amazon. Number one, is it a good time to start selling on Amazon? Absolutely, yes. As a matter of fact, e-commerce is one of the most growing industries during this COVID times and anything else. Why? Everybody's online. They can't go out. They can't go to stores. And even if they could, some people just don't want to. They they're, they're don't want to be sick or they don't want to expose anyone else or they just rather be safe than sorry. And, you know, ordering online is more and more and more um, increasing drastically. So, that's what you need to have realistic expectations. Is this going to be get rich quick? It's no more get rich quick now than any other time. So just because, um, just because everybody's doing it now doesn't mean that there's not an opportunity. But you get what you give. And I think there's a lot of people out there flashing crazy numbers and saying, you can make this much money. You can make six figures in two weeks. And if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. I have never once told you that you can make six figures in six weeks starting on Amazon. Why? Because it's simply unrealistic. It's absolutely unrealistic. But your effort yields your results. And knowing that they're not immediate is where you come into the realistic expectations. So when you put effort in, you've got effort. And your effort is going to yield a result. Um... So I don't know about any of you guys, but during this COVID times, it's been a little bit crazy and we have, you know, all the snacks and all the different things in the house and we're all in here all the time. So I feel like everyone's constantly eating, right? And like, I'm one of those, right? Chocolate and wine and, you know, just all kinds of crazy stuff going on here, right? But that effort of all that snacking is going to yield a result. The result is probably a little bit more sluggish, maybe some extra pounds, like nobody wants that. But whatever you do is going to yield a result. Now, is it going to yield a result overnight or right away? No. You know, you eat, so, you eat a whole bag of potato chips, you might feel sick and bloated, but over time, 
you know, if that's not your normal habit, you might gain a little bit of weight here and there, but it's like not from that one thing. The result comes negative or positive. In this case, I'm using a negative result, but the negative or positive comes with consistency over time. If you consistently eat a bag of chips and, and um, chocolate donuts for lunch every single day, you're going to see a negative effect on your health, on your weight, on your well being over time. The first time you do it, nah, probably won't see the scale move as much. But if you start doing this on a regular basis, you're going to see that. Same thing with business. If you're putting in positive efforts. You can't always expect that result to be the next day. You have to look at that three months from now, six months from now. Look at six months ago what you did. Looking at the results you have today, the money in your bank account today, the money in your Amazon account today, how many products you're selling, how many products have you listed, bundles you've created. Immediately, you might not have seen that result, but now look at the long term. How much have you done in the past six months? I mean, we're looking at almost being, you know, we're edging towards the end of like Q2 at this point. And at this point, we're mid Q2. Looking at that, like, what did your Q1 look like now? I know with COVID and coronavirus and all this stuff, like everything was affected. So we can't necessarily compare apples to oranges when it comes to that. But the looking at your long-term results, if you're just starting out, you don't want to look at, you know, your direct results of the past two weeks. Every effort, effort plus action equals results. Whether it's positive or negative, you're putting in positive time and you're doing research and you're finding products and buying them and putting them for sale, you're going to see a result of your action. So it's time for you to realize that you need to have your expectations lining up with the time and money that you're putting into your business. If you're not putting a lot of money into your business, you're not going to see a lot of results because... It takes money to make money, right? I know a lot of people have asked, like, how do I start a business? I have no money and I'm trying to create income. I'm like, no, you get a job. You earn some money that you can invest into a business. You can't just start with nothing and hope for the best. Now you can start with something small and build it up slowly over time. Absolutely. That's how I started my business. And I absolutely believe in that. But you have to start with something. You have to be committed in time and money. But things change, right? Everything, especially when it comes to Amazon. Oh my gosh, you guys. Everything changes all the time. Amazon is very quick to just pull the rug right out from under you and just let you know a little bit later. So what are the benefits? What is the best way to benefit from selling on Amazon right now today in 2020? What does this look like? The first thing, it's not going to be what you expect for me to, me to say. The first thing is determining what you want out of your business. Now, it's not just money. A lot of people are just like, oh, I just need to make some extra money and I need to do it however, wherever, because, you know, the means aren't meeting the ends or whatever. If you're not motivated by just more, there's lots of ways, to be honest. I mean, I could probably do a podcast episode about ways to make quick cash. If you're just trying to make quick cash and you're not committed to having a business long term that can give you residual income over and over again and get direct results from your efforts, there's lots of ways to make quick cash right now. There's things that you could sell on local marketplaces, offer up, let go, um, other marketplaces that could probably give you quick cash to just pay a bill or two. But if you're just trying to, I don't know, float some extra cash around, this is, that's not a business. That's just almost like having a garden sale. Like, okay, that, there's, there's no shame in that. But the reality is that if you're trying to build a business, we don't build businesses from, I just need money. You have to have other reasons. What do you want from this business? What do you want it to do? Do you want it to just produce cash? Well, that's going to take work and money and effort. Do you want to put that in? What is the benefit to you for starting or continuing a business on Amazon or anywhere else? What is, write down your benefits. What are you getting out of this? Because when I look and the days where I have to do 97 merchant fulfill orders, guys, I don't want to do that. That is not my passion in life. I am not about packing tape. I don't love hauling boxes in and out and doing packaging like that, but I'm doing what it takes right now to save my business because what is the benefit? Overall, my long-term benefit of this business is that it is the main income stream in my family. It is providing us freedom location-wise and financially. There's, there's no one telling me that I've got a salary cap. 
I can earn as much money as effort and time that I want to put into this business. It's up to me. And so that no one's telling me that what, what I can and can't do, or I'm not working and putting all kinds of effort and time and money into my business to pad someone else's pockets. <laughs> Amazon definitely gets their fair share, but they trade me with benefits. I get benefits from selling on Amazon. It's, you know, traffic and they do storage and shipping and, um, all that kind of stuff. So I'm not complaining about the chunk that Amazon takes out of my selling because I'm happy to pay them for that. But what's the different benefit from your regular job? What is it that you really want out of this? Because that's going to be the driver and the motivator for you to do what it takes to do that. Do you want more control of your time? And who tells you where to go and what? Like some of you right now might be laid off from the job that you love or a job that you hate or whatever, but somebody else just controlled what you can do with your life. Now, mind you, if you own a restaurant and the government told you you can't operate um, or you can do delivery only. I've seen businesses completely just close and to say, delivery is not worth it or um, take out and carry out. It's not gonna produce enough business. And then I see other people killing it. They're sending out emails to their customers. They're sending out Facebook messages or saying, hey, we are open from these hours and this is what you can order from us. And we will do, you know, car side delivery or we will, you know, whatever it takes to, to keep their business. Um, so although the government has said they can't operate normally, they can still operate. And some of them have chose to just go home and put their tail between their legs and just ride it out. Okay, fine, do that. But the people that it means something to, they're like, forget it. We are staying open for our loyal customers. So do you want control over how much money you can earn? Because if you work a nine to five, there's only so much you can earn before you're just trading dollars for hours and that's it. Do you want the control over the benefits from your efforts? This is my most important thing and the reason I work for myself and the reason I have an Amazon store and the reason why I do what I do. Because I and my family get the direct benefits from all the efforts that are put in. That's the most important thing to me. It's really hard if you put your heart and soul into work and you're working on projects and you're doing something and then it makes someone else a lot more rich. It's like, no, I get to see direct efforts, direct benefits financially and freedom and time and other things directly by the efforts that I'm putting in. And so I prefer that. That is how I maximize the benefit of selling online. I created what I want my business and lifestyle to look like. And you can do that too. Because let's ask this question. How many of you previously did retail arbitrage or thrifting of some sort, and you had to make a huge pivot because of the stay at home or quarantine orders? I mean, just let that sink in your ears for a second. If you've done retail arbitrage or you were living on thrifting for eBay or other different things, all of a sudden, your world was turned upside down. You can no longer go to that store, at least without some shame factor or without some sort of breaking of laws, if you will. Um, and I know some people got to do what they got to do, and I'm not judging you for that, but they're definitely made a difference in a lot of the country of where you could go, what you could buy, what you could do with that sort of thing, and um, you know, endangering yourself and your health or other people. So thinking about that, Arbitrage is no longer a viable long-term Amazon business model. Does it work in the short term? Yes, but it comes with so much risk unless you, and also not just risk, but lifestyle. Do you want to pound the pavement, go out eight to four or five hours a day, every day, every other day, package and shipping daily, shipping it to Amazon, being anchored to a location because you have to be able to go out constantly shopping, shipping. Um, and let's be real, it's not really nine to five, it's more like nine to nine you know, when you start doing that kind of stuff. Do you want to rely on stores, retail arbitrage stores, thrifting, be at the mercy of whatever's on the shelf on that day? What, do you want to deal with IP claims and inauthentic claims and listing issues because of brands and UPCs? And all? Okay. Is that the lifestyle you want? Because great, you're not going to get any judgments from me. If that's the lifestyle you like and you like the enjoyment and that, that's something that you like to do, great, have at it. As for me and mine, I don't want to have to be anchored to that. I don't want to say, wow, this is a really good seller, but I can only get six of them at this store and I have to go to 10 stores just to get a few of these. I'd rather not. 
My business was definitely affected by COVID, the COVID crisis. I had to make an immediate pivot, but only with product and not with my process. So with the product, I reached out to my wholesalers immediately and I said, I'm looking for the following items. Y'all ever see like American Pickers and they go, um, if you haven't seen it, it's just on what, A&E or something like that on, on cable or whatever, American Pickers. And they sometimes show up at people's houses with their camera crew and everything else and a list. And they're saying, hey, we see you kind of have some of this nostalgic stuff outside. Here's the things that we're buying. Do you have any of these things, you know, that we can look at and you might be willing to sell? Same type of thing. I called vendors and I said, look, I am looking to buy um, hobby type items. I'm looking to buy puzzles. I'm looking to buy board games, I'm looking to buy homeschool activities, crafts for kids, paints, yarn, anything that somebody would do stuck at home. Think of rainy day items, hobby items. People are stuck at home. They can go outdoors. Yes, but you can only go outdoors for so long. And then what happens? Then you're at home and then you're bored. You can't go to the club. You can't go to the movies. You can't go to the concerts. You can't go to restaurants. Like everyone is stuck at home. So I reached out immediately to all my vendors and I sent them this list of things and they, within an hour, a lot of them sent back to me, here's the companies that are still shipping that have all these items. You should place this order. You should place this order. So within a week, we had pivoted to something new and different that I knew people were going to buy right now. So the whole process, yes, we're doing some merchant fulfill, but we've also shipped stuff into Amazon as well. So yeah, that changed for a short time, but now we've discovered new products that might actually do well year round. So if you're doing wholesale, I didn't have to leave my house to go hope I could find some inventory that was on the shelf somewhere. I didn't have to leave my house to make contacts with vendors to say, Hey, come in. What, what do you have to sell? I want to sell who's, who's shipping. So you made a few phone calls and you make a pivot. So what is the benefit for that? The benefit is we're not always in control of our environment, right? We all had to stay home. We all had to be stuck and wondering what we were gonna do. And you could either choose to go out anyway and have some risk involved in that, or you could just say, okay, we'll pivot into something new. So what is working right now on Amazon for a lot of people is wholesale bundling and wholesale in particular. Now I've had a lot of clients come to me and say, okay, I've done some wholesaling, but it's just not making me any money. There's a lot of competition, things like that. The best thing about bundling is that the options are very unlimited. There's so many things that can be bundled together. And also I can't say enough about this. You sell generic products. Now, when I say generic, I don't mean like the store brand generic, like Walmart's generic brand is Equate. We should all know that. But that's a generic item. So you've got Q-tips. You've got Q-tips as a brand name. I know you have cotton swabs or whatever else that you want to put in your ears. There's different brands of that. I'm talking things like paper clips, bungee cords, home decor, things like this. They don't really have are they manufactured by someone? Sure. But they don't really have a lot of brand names. Like, can you name me a brand name of bungee cord? Like, I don't know. They're just bungee cords. You say, Hey, I need these from the store. When I say generic, I mean, there are tons and tons of products that we all buy on a regular basis every single day that don't necessarily have brand names on them. And I think a lot of people think, Oh my gosh, I have to go, I have to sell Nike shoes and KitchenAid, you know, um, appliances and everything has to have a big brand name and I have to do volume. No, you don't. As a matter of fact, you can sell plain, boring, everyday stuff that people buy on a regular basis without brand names, without different things. And you can make millions of dollars. That is the truth because that is what I do. A lot of things that I sell, none of y'all would have ever heard of any brand name that doesn't really even have a brand name, but it's things that people want, need, and buy online every single day. And so there's, there's room for that, especially in bundles, especially in wholesale. Don't try to get wholesale accounts with like Barbie dolls and things like that. Like there's millions of people out there selling Barbie dolls and the margins are very slim, but instead you can get an account that sells doll accessories and create a whole bundle. You know why? <clears throat> People are doing it with like American Girl doll clothes. They're 18 inch doll clothes and they're selling 10 piece sets for 30 to $50. Well, if y'all ever bought anything from American Girl, you know, one outfit can cost $50, but your little girl would just be just as happy if she could buy 10 outfits for her doll and you could only spend, you know, five bucks each on them. People are doing that. They don't have to be brand names in order to sell. And there's unlimited variation options. 
straight wholesale still does well in non-saturated markets. So if you're not going after all of the low hanging fruit and trying to make 10 cents on everything, then there's tons and tons of wholesale products out there that you can still sell single units of and still make a really good margin on. But guess what? It's not easy. You actually have to do work. <gasps> can you believe this? You actually have to do work. You have to do some research. It, all the software and the bots aren't going to do it all for you. Sometimes you actually have to sit down and think like another human being would think and be like, oh my gosh, I have real customers out there that would be looking into these things. What do they want? What do they need? What do they buy? So Wholesale Bundles shows you how to find suppliers and find products and niches that sell well in a non-traditional way. It's not going to use a bunch of software tools to just kind of spit out a bunch of things for you, although that would be super helpful in the beginning. Um, just there are ways to make pivots and changes, especially during these, these 2020 times where things have turned upside down for all of us in all different ways. Selling on Amazon is still has tons and tons of benefits to it if you do it correctly. If you're just trying to jump in on a trend and ride the wave, you know, that, that's exactly how your business is going to look. If you're constantly trying to just follow trendy things in a quick dollar, your business is going to look like a quick dollar. And those are the ones that usually go away the fastest. If you want term, long-term sustainability, look at other businesses that have stood the test of time. And look at what they did to make shifts in their business so they could still hang when the going got tough. That's who survives. And so the way that you can do that, especially if you've been doing a lot of arbitrage, is start making the switch into wholesale. Start reaching out to companies, especially now. They're all hurting for business. They're willing to say yes in other situations where they maybe not have said no. Um, their brick and mortars are closed. They're not ordering. People aren't going out. They're staying in and ordering online. So having an online presence is so important. So those are the things that you need to think about. First of all, determine what the benefit of your business you want to have. What is the benefit that you want to have in your business? You want more control over your time or your, how much you earn or your location freedom? Or what is it that you really want for your business? What is the benefit that you want to reap from Amazon? And then start making changes in your business to Line, align that with what you really want. If you really want location freedom, align what you're doing with getting a prep center, getting the inventory out of your house, figuring out how to make all the logistics work so that you don't have to be anchored to your house, ordering product, having it delivered and shipping it back out. If it's uh, financial freedom that you want, then learning how to do those hours better so that you can run a business from home. Look, we ran our business from home without a prep center for, I would say, the majority of what we were doing. Number one, when I first started, there wasn't prep centers and bundling wasn't even a thing. But now that it is, and we're using that, just slowly making those changes. These things don't happen overnight. So don't have the unrealistic expectation that this can all be done in 30 days. And then, you know, you're, you're going to skip off into the sunset um, with your millions, like just be in it for the long game and set yourself up for the long game for business, because that's how you survive the up and down times. Don't forget next week. And you know, if you want more about wholesale bundles, you can go to mommyincome.com slash system. You can learn all about the wholesale bundle system and what it is and why it works and all that kind of stuff. Mommyincome.com slash system. But next week, I want you to make sure that you mark your calendars to listen to next week's episode. Um, I'm going to talk about recession proofing your business and shifting products and your mindset into the things that people purchase because everybody tightens their perch strings a little bit during a recession time. And although we might not be in that in this moment, moment, the effects of the COVID-19 crisis are going to have uh, economical effects that will last for, you know, six months or longer, and maybe even longer than that. And so we have to prepare our businesses for the lean times. And so I'm going to talk about that next week. And I want to make sure you guys, um, you know, show up, grab your cup of coffee, grab your wine, walk your dog, whatever it is you're doing, and make sure that you pay attention to these things because we will, as business owners, product-based business owners, are going to need to make a shift in what we sell and how much we sell and where from. So I'm going to talk about all those strategies next week. So until then, I'll see you next week on the Amazon Files.